to discuss what is happening in the church, what are the parts of the church and the different adornments and utensils and items that are in the church and are used in the course of the services. And it seemed appropriate to speak about the Artuforio, the tabernacle, because there is a typology between the tabernacle, which holds the reserved sacrament on the one hand, and the Holy of Holies in the Old Testament, which held the manna, which was the foreshadowing and the prophecy of Christ coming into our midst of the bread from heaven. And two, a typology connecting those two realities with the Panagia, who herself in giving birth, in conceiving through the power of the Holy Spirit, became herself the dwelling place of the Most High God for those nine months and is also an example to all of us who as Christians are called to have Christ and his life within us and also to therefore become a tabernacle, a place uh, for the dwelling of the living God. However, that would take too long and we are running out of time for this morning. And there is something else that needs to be spoken of before we get that far into the altar. And that is the simple question of where does the priest stand? And if you have visited other churches, you have seen that depending on the church, the priest or the pastor stands in a multitude of different places and facing a multitude of different ways. In the Protestant church, churches, broadly speaking, the pastor always faces the people. And in the Catholic church, following the reforms and changes of the Second Vatican Council in the 60s, there too, the priest no longer faces away from the people, but goes behind the altar table and faces towards them. And the intent in both of these circumstances is that the priest be interacting with the people, not have his back to them as though to have his back to them is a matter of pride and of considering himself higher than the people. And because, therefore, every Christian communion other than us tends to have the pastor or the priest facing towards the people. It is necessary that we understand why it is that in our church the priest faces not ad populum, not towards the people, but always to the east, towards, well, towards Christ. And if we understand this, then we understand everything about what we do when we come into the church. In short, we do not come to the church to hear the priest, nor do we come to the church to hear the psalty, although the priest and the psalty, we like to be heard. But the people do not come into the church to hear us, nor do you come in to hear the choir. You don't come to church to hear a sermon. You don't even necessarily come to the church to hear the Word of God read, although all of these things happen. We come to the church to meet God. We come to the church to seek the face of the Almighty Lord, the Master of our lives, our Savior and our God, Jesus Christ. And we face towards the East, because light comes from the east. The sun rises in the east, and in facing towards the east, towards which, in which direction every Orthodox church is built, facing, we remind ourselves that the true light comes not from Edison's lamp, nor even from the sun in the heaven, but from the Son of God, who has shown salvation into our hearts. 
And if the priest has his back turned to the people for the majority of the service, it is because the priest is not talking to the people. The people are not talking to the priest. We are not interacting one with another. We are together interacting with Almighty God. And that is the role of the priest, to stand on behalf of the people, to offer his one hand, his one voice, his eyes, his body, to serve the mystery, to make the offering on behalf of all the people, to offer the bread and the wine that symbolize for all of us everything we are, everything we do, everything we make, all of our labors, all of our successes and all of our failures. We offer this to Christ. The priest offers this to Christ on behalf of every one of us. And Christ offers himself to us. And then the priest will turn and bring Christ to us. But this is why. And we should not ever be confused or be offended if the priest does not turn around and face us during the Lord's Prayer, although sometimes it is the priest turns around because he wants the people to speak, and he can't encourage them to speak if he has his back to them, but all of you are saying the creed. You are saying the Lord's Prayer. But if we are speaking together, then we are not speaking to one another. We are speaking with one voice, as one body, to our one Lord, who faces us always, but we face Him, not each other, when we come to the church. There are other services where the priest spends more time facing towards the people, where the prayer is not, well, where it's not a matter of prayer, but of hymns, where it's a matter of sermons. But if we see that the priest doesn't seem to be talking to us or paying much attention to us in the Orthodox Church, that's because he's not. And we shouldn't be paying attention to the priest. Yes, I said it. Don't pay attention to me. Pay attention to Christ. We face him together. We offer ourselves together to him. We offer our worship, our humility, our repentance, our meager and growing love, <clears throat> all this we offer to the Lord, and we receive from Him manifold and great gifts, because that is what we are here to do. <clears throat> now, I don't mean to criticize the Catholics or the Protestants. They do what they do, and it makes sense in light of what is happening. What they are doing, it is appropriate for the pastor to be facing the people, for the priest to be facing the people. But let us remember that if we do not do the same thing that they do, it's because we're doing, well, not the same thing. We come to offer ourselves together to Christ, not to separate the priest from the people, but to join priest and people together as one community, one body, together approaching the Lord. And if we were to do anything else, then it would send the other message. We would become distracted by how each other looks on a given morning. Oh, Father must not have gotten his hair cut yet. What's going to happen? Well, you might see that anyway, but don't pay attention to my hair. Pay attention to Christ. And I look towards the Lord because this way I don't see who is standing and who is sitting and who is talking. I focus on leading the people in worship. I know this is a simple thing. It almost seems childish to talk about this, but it is the simplest things that sometimes we forget especially when we get into different habits. The pews are a problem, not that I'm suggesting moving them, 
but the pews make us feel like we're an audience. Right? We're sitting in a bank of pews. It's a perfect arena, and we're watching who? The priest. That's what it seems like. And that's why I say this. You're not focusing on me. This is why, even though we have the nice seats, we stand most of the time. Because we're not here to sit and watch. We're here to work. We're here to make an offering of ourselves and one another and all of our lives to Christ our God. The pews are good. They're a blessing so that when we need to sit, we can sit. But let's not forget. Let us not be distracted by some of the incidentals of the church from the reality. We come here to worship God. We come here to meet God. We come here to receive and touch God. And in the same way as the woman who is healed, we come to be healed to be transformed. So that's why the priest faces east, not west, faces God, not the people. And that is that. You all have a blessed week. We will see you in the course of the coming week. I hope to see many of you this Thursday for the glorious feast day of St. John Chrysostom. And if not, we will see you next Sunday. Deus nos dices, que calidomado.